Please join me in welcoming Susan Will. Hi. <laughs> I may not need them, but I may. I canned my TED talk a week ago, and I canned it because it, it just wasn't gelling. And the reason it wasn't gelling is that the idea and the project that I was going to launch today wasn't gelling either. So I went camping with my family down the Nimboida River, and it was a really, really hot day. And I was talking to my partner, Emma, about how I was feeling a little bit stuck, and asked her advice. And she said, why don't you just talk about what you love? Why don't you just talk about this fantastic little market you set up and how much it means to you? And she was right, because I felt instant relief. And I could talk about this because it's something that I'd actually done. And the next day, we went to visit Bondi's farm. And Bondi's a certified orga organic pig farmer who has a stall at the Baloppi Markets. And the Baloppi Markets is our local organic produce market. And part of the ethos of the market is that I go and visit every single farm to make sure that they are growing with ethical and sustainable practices and that you are getting the real deal. And I go and visit every farm because it's really important to meet the farmers on their own turf and a way for me to get to know them better. And they're really proud of what they do. And his farm was absolutely beautiful. Um, I actually get emotional when I think about going to his farm because we got out of the car and I don't know who squealed more, my, my, my daughter or the pigs. But we jumped over the fence and we were surrounded by these beautiful heritage pigs called Tamworths and Blacks. And the babies were wallowing in the mud and my daughter went up and patted them. And Bondi's farm is what a really good organic farm should be. It's a highly productive farm and he uses his animal systems beautifully. So he's got a purpose-built forage crop, which happens to be wheat, which is high in protein. The pigs spend their day foraging through this beautiful crop, and they get to have a real life and do what pigs do, which is how our animals should be raised. And when they finish fertilizing this paddock, he plants a green manure crop. And after that, he plows it up and he puts his vegetables in. And that's the food that we get to eat. And I asked Bondi, I said, why are you raising heritage pigs when they take three months longer to mature to market weight than a commercial breed? And he says, Suze, it's really simple. He said, there's only 300 registered sow breeders in the world, of which I am one. And if we don't raise these animals for food, they'll become extinct. And he said, and part of my responsibility as a farmer is to be a conservationist. And I left that farm really inspired because it reminds me that our local farmers are, are going above and beyond just growing food. They're environmentalists. And they're not going to sell out for a dollar. They have huge integrity and huge heart. And I've, I felt so very proud to be a part of that. And I feel that way when I leave every one of the farms, that we are so lucky to have these people growing our food for us. Are there any farmers here today? Well, this is for you. I'm a marriage counsellor, and I've been a marriage counsellor for 15 years. And when I was living in Sydney, I hadn't grown much food. I didn't know how hard it was to grow food. I, I, I had no relationship with the people who grew it. And whilst I cared about organic food, I'd go into a supermarket if I was short on time, and I'd go buy my conventional fruit and veg like everyone else. And then we moved to Bellingen four years ago, and something took me by surprise that I wasn't expecting, and that is I absolutely fell in love with growing food. And I fell in love with biodynamics and permaculture. And what I love about biodynamics and permaculture is they taught me how to set up, set up a balanced farm and a harmonious farm, and what it is to grow the right food, plant the right herbs, plant the right flowers, 
to bring in the environment that's going to create a, a healthy, sustainable farm. And what I realise is it's more than growing food. I'm bringing in a little ecosystem. And in that ecosystem, I get to grow the most beautiful food for my family. What I love about biodynamics is that it taught me how to dance with nature and how to build beautiful, vital soils because we can't eat good food unless we have healthy soils. And that's where our life force is, and biodynamics taught me that. I'm never happier than when my hands are in the soil. I think my hands have grown a size since I've come here. And I love that I share that with my family. My daughter, Sahara, has seen the full cycle of life, from saving a seed and popping it in the ground, watching it germinate into a beautiful seedling, watching that seedling become food, harvesting that food and then cooking it in our kitchen. And I've got to say, I never get tired of watching that first little seedling pop through the soil. Four years later, we have a beautiful biodynamic farm. We only grow for ourselves, and then the excess we sell at the local produce markets. And there's a couple of things I've learned about growing food. One, it's really hard to do well, and it's even harder to make a living out of it. I'm not a farmer. I don't earn my living from growing food. But I'm advocating for them today because they really aren't the kind of people to get up on stage and talk about themselves. Corporations have decided they're farmers now. And Monsanto and companies like that are pushing that the future of our food is going to be monocropping and biotech farming. Those are fancy terms for genetically modified fruit grown on an enormous scale. And if that's the future of our food, I would suggest it's not a future worth wanting. I'd like to change that. Monocropping is the most destructive and uncaring land management practice we have today. It's basically growing one enormous crop on thousands of acres and it, it destroys the biodiversity on a farm. And the biodiversity is so important to growing healthy food and the only way they can produce a crop is to use chemical fertilizers and soil pushes and herbicides and pesticides and that's, that's cheap mass produced food. That's called conventional food. The mass production and cheap production of food is what is setting up factory farming, the inhumane practice of handling animals. And I think that is the beginning of our end. And it's the beginning of our disconnect to our own humanity. We have our own version of Monsanto in Australia. We have two large supermarket chains. They're trying to control the supply and the distribution of food by paying our farmers increasingly low prices for the produce. Our small farms can't compete with the large monocropping farms. They just don't produce enough food to make it worth their while. And by the time the food leaves their gates and arrives in your shopping baskets, it's probably changed hands over half a dozen times, and that's a lot of fingers in the pie. The farmer takes the biggest risk, does the majority of work and gets the least portion, and that's not an equitable, sustainable or fair system. And I don't want to support that game anymore. It's because of these corporations and their behaviour and their lack of integrity and their ethics that finally, we're starting to think outside of the square and we're starting to look for different solutions to the ones that are being imposed upon us. We're starting to realise that there's no one on a white horse coming to save the day and that these corporations who have so much power that we've given them aren't going to suddenly grow a conscience and do the right thing. So the future of food is on us. That's you and me the everyday decisions we make as to where we're going to buy our food and where we're going to put our dollar. And it's called grassroots change. 
And we're playing a new game. We're playing a new paradigm, and it's called humanity. It's called moving away from focusing on money and power and moving towards humanity and starting to care about each other and starting to look after each other and starting to support something higher. The game that we're playing is called Farmer's Markets. It's the fastest growing game in the world in food in the West. And the reason it's growing so fast is that we have a huge amount of people in the world that are starting to care about where their food comes from and how it's grown. And they want it to be organic because they understand that organic food is probably the only future we have if we're going to look after our health and our environment. The farm of market game is a game that's supporting farmers to get their mojo back because it's keeping them alive where they would otherwise be closing their doors. They get their mojo back because for the first time in a really long time, our small farms can grow the food that they want to grow for us, the way they want to grow it. They get to put a price on their food that they believe is fair for themselves and for us. They get to take it to a market, set up a beautiful stall, and they get to meet you, which is a really important part of their life because up to that point, they're faceless. The disconnect of food is over. We're changing. We're moving towards real paddock to plate. And that is the future of our food. I think it is localization. It's not globalization. I think we got that wrong. I think our future is going back to how we used to buy food. Outside in a beautiful marketplace where the kids can run around, where we can listen to local music and we can support local artisans and we can have a fantastic day out. But more importantly, Localization is when it's a collaboration. It's not just buying something that doesn't belong to anyone that we don't know. It's caring about our farmers and finally creating a sense of value because they have such an important job. They grow our food. When I set up the Bulopi markets, I knew nothing about running a market. I knew nothing about our organic local farmers. I'd met them a few times buying from them. And I got no help from our council. Those are the people in power that we rely on to come and save the day. They weren't there to save the day for me. But I guess the point I'm making is that it's not a hard thing to do, and it isn't, because the farmers do this for a living. They know how to set up a stall and how to sell their produce. All I had to do was create a place for them to come, and they did. Farmers markets are, for me, a reminder <laughs> of what it is to take our power back as a community and to really look after each other again. Farmers markets, for me, is a, a place where we can remind ourselves that um, we can do it differently, that we don't have to roll over to corporate monopolies and we're not going to be bullied into submission that we will find a better way of doing things and we are finding a better way of doing things. I really want to thank our farmers. It's been such a privilege to be a part of uh, this process with them and I want to thank them for inspiring me, for renewing my hope and humanity and for growing such beautiful food with such love and care. We're so lucky here in Bellingen to have access to that. And they're a constant reminder that there's certain things in life that just aren't for sale. And that is our integrity in our hearts. Thank you.